Praise the Lord. You're welcome again to this um, meditation, this discussion on uh, our heavenly residence. And we're going to trust God to grant us much speed and much grace and much uh, enlightenment. Oh, that God Almighty would release His grace upon us through His precious blood. His Spirit of grace will come upon us, taking us into the highest of God. And we are going to operate truly as sons of the living God. Not the uh, princes will no longer walk on their legs. Why servants are riding on horses, but princes would ride, would ride on horses. Glory to God. Um, last time we were still talking, we're hinging from Psalm 19, a beautiful, glorious psalm, talking about uh, the heavens. It, it opened the scene, talking about the heavens. It says the heavens declare the glory of God. And we were talking from Genesis chapter 1 examining the firmament and the redemptive work of God in the seven-day creation. And we are not going to take the whole thing because that is not the focus of our discussion. But however, we would take to the point where we are going to, which is when talking about the heavenly bodies. And uh, we'll read off from Genesis chapter 1, from where we stopped, we stopped at verse uh, 9. Verse 9 uh, is after verse 8, sorry, excuse me where God um, made the firmament. And we saw the how he said God made a firmament and divided the waters. He said he made a firmament in the midst of the water. So the waters were all one. We said that they were from Je uh, Revelation chapter um, 17, we saw that the waters speak of people, of nations, of multitudes. So the waters speak of persons. And we saw that a firmament went in the midst of the waters and divided the waters from the waters. That same firmament went in the midst of the waters in Mesopotamia and divided Abraham from his people. God said, come out from amongst your people. Oh, glory to God, to a land where I will show you. So we see that God has done this separation work throughout and he's doing it now, brethren, do not just say, I am a Christian. Don't just say, oh, I am saved. I'm just a churchgoer. We need to be delivered from the spirit of just churchgoing, religion. God is doing a work. That firmament, God is putting it, still dividing the waters from the waters today. There are the waters above the firmament and there are the waters beneath the firmament. The waters beneath the firmament are designed to become the waters above the firmament. Now, note in Genesis chapter 1 that he said that God put the firmament in the midst of the waters and divided the waters from the waters. But at that time, the waters are both. There were, nobody was dwelling there. Jesus Christ, remember, paved the way for men to dwell above. But it shows that God went ahead to search out a resting place that there is a place called the heavens that men will must dwell and operate from. But after he made this division and called the firmament heaven and, you know, and uh, the rest, earth, verse 9, Genesis chapter 1, he says, And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Remember that God divided waters above, but after that, he left, he left it, showing that there was nothing there. He came to the one under. After this place, nothing again was said about the waters above. So everyone was below, and God began to do a work. And he said, for the ones below, he said, let the waters be gathered into one place, and let the dry land emerge. Now, when we now talk about the earth, the Earth emerging from the waters, it is still another separation. Amen. Now let's understand. Verse 10. It says, And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. So when dealing with the waters that are below the that were below the firmament, God caused another separation. 
and he said, let these waters, okay, gather to one place and let the dry land appear. The dry land, the earth is higher in, when we talk about in elevation, the earth is higher, it stands out from the sea. That is why in geography, we use heights and in describing height, we will say so, so, so feet or so, so, so meters above sea level. So the sea is in a lower dimension of things in, in topographical scale. The sea is lower and then the earth appears. Now, this earth class prophetically can talk about the church, can talk about the general system of the general, okay, let me not even say the church because it waters down the church. The church is a glorious body. Amen. The church is actually the heavens. You know, I, I, I would re rephrase that rather. I would say that the earth speaks of the religious systems. The religious system of Christianity. You know, scripture, Paul talks about a people who have a form of godliness, but denying, denying the power thereof. So it's a system. A system of, re a religious system can be described prophetically as the earth. And then the sea can be described prophetically as the unregenerated man, the world. So even with the waters below, the firmaments, which were all people, God again caused a separation. He said, let the dry land emerge. Let it appear. And remember, if you go further, it was the dry land that trees began to grow and herbs yielding seed after its kind began to spring forth life. So even these religious systems have measures of life. But God is calling us into something higher. Do not stop on the earth level. The earth level is good. It's good that you are not of the C class. But I tell you, don't stop on the earth level. We need to press in. There is a space. There is availability in the, in the space of the heavens, of the waters above the firmament. So we got to move further. We got to press on, press in, in life, indeed, in doctrine, in sanctification. We've got to press into the waters above. There is a higher calling. Jesus did not stop at the resurrection. He ascended into glory. Hallelujah. So there is a higher calling. So we see the separation of the world, of the religious system from the world. He says, he, the, see, remember, it was all water below the firmament. But all of a sudden, the gathering together of the waters were automatically, their name automatically changed to sea. No more water. It became the sea. It's giving up to saltiness. It is, it is, it's, 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 it's unregenerated. But the earth, he caused to, to emerge. So this is the process of God taking the, the waters under the firmament to make it, the, to, uh, to, to make them grow and ascend into the waters above the firmament. Amen. And God said, verse 11, we, we, we are not going to hinge here because this is not our scope. But we can at another time, look at the redemptive work of God in the creation story. But Genesis chapter 1 verse 11, it says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, you see, and herbs yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. That seed of Christ is inside. It's, it's inside. yielding seed and all manner of life. It says, and the earth brought forth grass and herbs yielding seed uh, after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good, and the morning, evening and the morning were the third day. Now, this is what we are going to, and this is where we are going to stop, verse 14 to 19. It says, and God said, let there be lights, hallelujah, in the firmament of the heaven, to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven. To do what? To give light upon the earth and it was so. Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven. Began to talk about the creation of what is of, 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 the, of, the, of the heavenly bodies, the sun, the moon, and the stars, and all the constellations of heaven. 
Now, remember on the day one, it says, let there be light. So we see that that light is not, was not the sun. No, no, no. It was the glorious light of Jesus Christ, the light of the world, the hope of creation, the confidence of all the earth shining to bring illumination. Oh, yes. To bring illumination to a dark world. As we said, light is a precursor for redemption, for redemptive work. Now, it says, let there be light in the firmament of the heaven. And what are these things to do? To begin to cause a division, to divide the day from the night. Oh, glory. And it now says, let them be for signs. Now we see that when it now begins to talk about these heavenly bodies, they begin to perform a stronger ministerial function. It's not just the earth that is yielding grass. Yes, we know that these herbs are even to be used for healing of the nation. And that is why when we stop, we need to press on into God. We need to move beyond Pentecost. Moving beyond Pentecost is not without Pentecost. It's Pentecost included. But we need to move beyond. That's why Pentecost is hinged a lot on the, on, in a huge uh, factor on the, both the charismatic and the miraculous. And the miraculous. Because the herbs are to be used for the healing of the nations, as is, we see in the book of Revelation. But we need to move beyond. There's a stronger ministerial function when the heavenly bodies are created. It's said that they are to give like They have a fivefold ministry. But this is not what we are going to touch on now. It's going to be a deviation. But there's a fivefold ministry of the luminaries of divine witnessing. I call them luminaries of divine witnessing. It says that they are to divide the day from the night. And they are to say, let them be for what? For signs, number one. Let them be for seasons. Let them be for days, for years. And let them be for lights. Oh, glory to God. Let them be for lights. To cause a division between light and darkness. A people um, uh, arising, you know, with the clear spirit of judgment. To divide between good and evil. A people who have indeed been on the mountain and have been taught of the Lord. When Moses went up to the mountain in Exodus 19, the children of Israel, the rest of them could not come. Even though they ate, the elders ate and saw the God of heaven. And when he saw him, he said that he, 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 was, he appeared you know, uh, with a paved walk of sapphire beneath his feet. And it was as it were. They had the clearness of heaven. That shows again the, the you know, the, this, this firmament. But even though they had such a revelation of the Lord, they could not come up to their Mount Sinai to, 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 to meet the Lord. No. They worshipped from afar, from the nether part of the mountain. Only Moses went up. And you would realize that when Moses went up, Moses spent, was there 40 days and 40 nights being, um, uh, being given to what? Being taught of the Lord. And when Moses came down, he came down with the glory. Remember Psalm 19 verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God. Moses began to expound the commandments and statutes and testimonies of God to the children of Israel. He was declaring the glory of God. He was showing forth the handiwork of the Lord. A man who had ascended into the mountain, into the heavens of God, and had interacted with the Spirit of God, had a clear sense of judgment. You to say, the scripture says Moses will sit down, all the matters of Israel, they will bring it before him. And he was judging Israel, all the matters, until he received greater counsel from his father-in-law. So he had the spirit of judgment to divide the day from the night. Oh, let them be for light. Moses was a light unto Israel. David was another light unto Israel. Oh, David taught the people judgments. Taught the people the judgment of God. Don't look at his, his, his brief failures. He taught the people the judgment of God. And when Mo David was winning old, you know, in age, and was in a battle and a Philistine was about to kill him, his name was Ishai Benob, and he said that he was guided with a new sword. And, and he thought to have finished David. That means he had so beaten David and he was just remaining to give the last blow. 
And Joab came and slew him. And they turned to David. Because David was waxing old in age. And he said, from today you are no longer coming again to war with us. That thou quench not the light of Israel. Brethren, you and I are lights of the world. There is a place for being the salt of the earth, not a problem. There is a place for being the salt of the earth. The religious man in the religious system just going to church, playing church, you can be salt. Because after all, we have people playing church who are necessarily not fornicating and doing things of the world. So the people of the world can actually say, oh, actually, this man is not fornicating. You know, after all, people in the religious system go around for all manner of evangelism. You, so you can be the salt of the earth, no problem. But there is a place for being the light of the world. The light of the world. It says, and let them be for lights, verse 15, in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. You see, a ministry to the earth class. So moving beyond Pentecost is not to move and begin to be judgmental. For example, to people who are playing church. No, but to provide light. Light. And it was so. And God made two great lights. The greater light was to rule the day. Remember, we are the people of the day. The scriptures let us walk as people of the day, not in chambering, in wantonness, you know. So, the greater light is to rule the people of the day. And the lesser night, to rule the night, he made the stars also. We are going to come back here to this verse 16 to understand what is the greater light and what is the lesser light. And God set them where? In the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Oh, that we are going to be light bearers. Light bearers. When Aaron arose, you know, Aaron who was chosen in the ministry of the high priest. Aaron means light bearer. Oh, Jesus is our high priest. As he shines, he shines on us and shines through us. And we reflect his glory to the world. Verse 18 says, and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Now let us go back to Psalm 19 and begin to move with speed, you know, uh, uh, to begin to grab more understanding. Now as we have examined Genesis 1, you can begin to understand in Psalm 19, we can understand Psalm 19 better. When David taps into the, the strings of the prophetic to begin to talk about the heavens, going from coming from Genesis with the foundation from Genesis 1, we can begin to understand. We can begin to better understand, you know, Psalm 19. It says the heavens declare, as we see where Moses went up to that mountain and he came back down, he declared the glory. He was an, it was an embodiment of God's glory. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiworks. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. Hallelujah. Day unto day, as we ascend to this realm. Remember, it is a high ministerial realm. When you ascend unto there, it's like ascending to the mountains of God, dwelling upon the mountains, the mountains of Jehovah. It says, day unto day, utter a speech. Oh, glory. And night unto night, they are a people of great and sound knowledge. It says, there is no speech, no language where their voice is not heard. When God made these heavenly bodies, he divided them to all the nations of the earth. He divided them to all the nations. There is no nation of the earth that would not have people of this class. Their, 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 um, their power, their, the force of life will reach to the ends of the earth. In, in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19, I, I will read that quickly. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19, when God was giving these people through the hand of Moses, the people of Israel, an orientation before they moved into the promised land. And he said, he said that they should not worship any likeness, any God. They should not look up to heaven, you know, to worship anything, any of the host of heavens. You see, verse uh, 19 says, Unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon 
and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, should us be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God had divided unto all nations under the, the whole heaven. Where I'm going to is where it says the Lord divided this light unto all nations. So when Psalm 19 verse 3 says their speech, so there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. So we see that it's all dealing about the operation of the people of the heavens from verse 1 to 3. And the only place the earth is mentioned is verse 4. And when it was mentioned, it was speaking about the externality of the, of the operations in the heavens on the earth. Verse 4 says, says, their light is gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them had he set a tabernacle for the sun. Glory to God. I'm sure we will be thinking, we will be thinking, ah, what is this young man saying? Um, the heavens, well, this scripture is talking about the sun, moon, and star. This scripture is not talking about um, the people dwelling in the heavens. Come on. You know, <laughs> hallelujah. But we thank God for the expansion, expansion of the Holy Spirit as he expanded his word to, to, uh, uh, to his servants. If you look at Romans chapter 10, verse 13, and let us see, just to give us a backing that this heavens is talking about in is, to, is indeed talking about a people. When Paul was talking, brother Paul was talking about his kinsmen, his brethren of Israel, and he was talking about how they need to hear the gospel. Follow very closely. Verse thirteen says, "For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him?" in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him in whom they have not heard? He was talking about Israel. And how shall they hear without a preacher? So he said that there must be a preacher that will bring the word for people to hear. Verse 15, he says, And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. He quoted a scripture in the Old Testament in Isaiah. He says, and bring glad tidings of good things. Then verse um, 16 says, but, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah, Isaiah said, Lord, who had believed our reports? Isaiah chapter 53 was quoted here. Follow on closely. Verse 17. So then, faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Verse 18. But I say... Have they not heard? Paul now answers the question and says, Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. So we see that verse 18 here, Paul quotes Psalm 19 to show that Psalm 19 is not just talk, it's not talking about, it's not just talking about the sun, moon, and star, but it is talking about a people. Because Psalm 19, verse 4. Psalm 19 verse 4 says, it says their line is gone out through all the earth. So if it were the physical sun, that couldn't have been what Paul was talking about. Paul said, oh yes, verily their line. He quoted Psalm 19 through the light of the Holy Spirit expounding what Psalm 19 was actually primarily talking about. He said their line is gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. So that is a proof that this Psalm 19 is prophetic as all other scriptures are and is pointing to a greater glory, a greater revelation. Oh glory, our line indeed is going to go out through all the earth. As you ascend to the mountains of God, as you open up yourself to what God is doing in this time, we ascend with Jesus to the heavens. We are beyond religiosity. Have we, how many of us have sat down to say, what is the pattern? What is the operation of God today on the earth? The pattern of God's church. Today we have churches that are led, you know, like, like, uh, like business organizations. A man sitting down, exalting himself as soul and above everybody, heads and shoulders tall above the people. But God is calling for a Davidic company where everybody is in their courses. He says he made the stars also. The stars are in their courses. 
We have the Levites, the priests, the potters, the singers, oh glory, around the tabernacle of David, offering praise and glory unto him that liveth forever and ever. They are great promises of God. Rather than us sitting down and playing religion and trying to remain rapturable, oh no, 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 we can ascend and be seated with Jesus Christ in heavenly places. Hebrews chapter 4 says, seeing that we have an high priest who is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. He is passed into the heavens. And the book of Acts tells us that he was received into the clouds. And when they gazed upon him, they looked upon him and said, Oh, he's going into the clouds. Oh, yeah, we are still on the earth. And then the angel said, Are you gazing on him who is going into the heaven? He says, The same way he goes, the same way shall he come. That coming is Jesus Christ in first principle coming through his people because he came back again on the day of Pentecost as the Holy Spirit to take a people up with him to dwell in the heavens of God. He says that in them, Psalm 19 verse 4, had he set a tabernacle for the sun. Glory to God. He has set in these people a tabernacle for the sun. Our God is a sun. That's what the, the scripture tells us in the Psalms. It should be Psalm 84, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. It says, God is a son. Our God is a son. The, he has set a tent, a house for the son in this heavenly realm. We are going to pick up from here. When next we meet and uh, for the final session and trust the Holy Spirit to grant us much speed, much understanding, and much grace. Exciting times. It is always beautiful to have entrance into the revelation of God into the mind of God to know how we position ourselves at this time. We must arise. The earth is looking for people to bring the division, to divide light from darkness in this dark world. Oh, a people need to arise who are sound in doctrine. Not a people who are, you know, we are just there. We don't know. The church does not know what is good or bad again. And in the name of accepting all, we want to accept everybody. Come as you are. And we begin to compromise. Oh, we, we walk in love, but we don't condone wickedness. We walk in love as the Lord's gentleness has made us great in our lives. You know, our gentleness in ministry to others who are weak makes them great. We will meet again for the last session where we wrap up these thoughts and this uh, discussion. The Lord grant your great help and his Holy Spirit mightily shines upon you. And uh, see you next time. Praise the Lord. Amen.